Hi, it's Randy at RECycle. Uh, you can find us on the web at r-ecycle.com. I'm here to talk about the three uh, CYC motors currently available. These are, you know, the, the, the Gen 3 Stealth and the Gen 3 Pro. Uh, that's third generation. They came out in the fall. The Photon is a pre-production unit. Uh, they're just starting to come out. There's some similarities and differences, and I thought I'd run through those just to help people understand what the choices are and what is best suited for their needs. So in terms of power, we have the, the Photon coming in at uh, 1,200 watts. That's, that's 1,200 watts maximum, uh, 110 newton meters of torque. Uh, the Stealth is 1,500 watts, uh, 150 newton meters of torque. And the Pro is 3,500 watts, uh, up to 200 newton meters of torque. And what you'll actually get depends on conditions because uh, you're not always going to put enough load on the motor to achieve those numbers. But you don't necessarily want that much drain all at once anyway. Uh, but it also it, it's mainly going to be restricted by the type of cells in the battery pack that you have, the voltage of the pack. Uh, the uh, the BMS that the pack is using, and you know the packs that are designed for fast draw, that is to deliver a lot of power, are also going to run out of energy faster. And so uh, there's a trade-off between getting maximum energy, uh, but also uh, you know that, that the effect that that has on range is is means that it's going to diminish faster. And those types of packs. Uh, tend to uh, drain fast. So um, the mechanisms on these are somewhat different, but the retaining uh, method is is quite similar. So I'll run through that. The, the Photon uh, is using a mechanical drive, very similar to a Bafang. Uh, it, the motor is uh, encased in, along with the controller and a reduction gear that's driving an internal mechanism that turns the chain ring. And the cha this chain ring is then connected to the bike's cassette. Uh, the Stealth and the Pro um, both use a freewheel that's driving this 219H um, go-kart style chain. Uh, and it's driving its own freewheel um, so that's the primary drive. And then the bicycle uh, chain ring is connected through that freewheel. Uh, and then that power is delivered to the cassette. Uh, the controller is mounted underneath. The Pro and the Stealth use the same controller. Uh, but you can see the difference in the size of the motor here. Considerably smaller with the Stealth uh, than the Pro. And the... Wiring on all three is the same. They use an XT90 connector for the battery pack, and there's this is the uh, wiring harness for the display and the throttle, and then this is the wiring for the speedometer, the speed sensor, and um, it also has its communication for the Bluetooth. Uh, so the way these uh, these bottom brackets attach to the bicycle is all quite similar. Um, the CYC uh, previously used a square taper crank, which is more, which is common with uh, the Bafang and the Tongshen, for instance. Uh, but the ISIS is now being used, and the benefit of that is to get, you know, greater contact point across, uh, you know, across the surface of the, the crank arm. And the benefit of that is that it's less likely to come loose. The um, or, or it'll take more time or more pressure to do it. So uh, what happens is these, these cranks can loosen up over time just by force back and forth, and the square taper cranks are kind of notorious for backing out. Um, the other thing is they're using a larger bolt, so the bolt is a bigger surface area. That's also going to attach more securely. And these bottom brackets... Uh, well, the spindle of the bottom bracket uh, comes in various lengths. So the default on all three of these 
is 68 to 83 millimeter. And they use the same hardware in that range. Uh, you basically use spacers on the out on the outside, that is the left side, uh, in order to uh, make up for the gap. And the way these are retained uh, on the photon, there's a small bracket uh, that, that the bearing cup is passing through. Um, it's it's going to have shims in here to adjust for various sizes, but uh, the other side is, is all the same. Uh, in previous generations, the outside bearing cup, the left, the left side, uh, was threaded. Um, these are no longer threaded. They're just using compression across the sides of the bottom bracket to re uh, retain themselves. Uh, and then, of course, you want just a little bit of tension on the bracket, uh, angular tension on the bracket in order to keep the motor from uh, securely from rotating. So the, uh, the Stealth and the Pro um, are virtually identical in that regard. Um, they use the same method uh, as the Photon. That is, the, it's a, you, use, you use spacers to fill these gaps uh, and tighten that down. The Stealth and the Pro both use a bracket. Uh, it's important that that uh, you have another uh, place to to carry weight because because of the weight of the motor being out on the end of this lever. Uh, so this typically goes over the the top of the down tube and then clamps the motor to the bottom of the down tube. You know, some, some of our builds, we build brackets for these because what we're looking for is, um, you know, there's, there's two things. Sometimes the cabling or other obstructions on the downside of the bottom of the down tube, the bottom side of the down tube uh, are in the way. And so we use a bracket to hold the motor off the down tube. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll pinch um, the, the frame with a bracket that then holds the motor at a fixed distance away from the frame. Um, we also do that sometimes to actually make room for the battery in cases where we have the battery mounted to the uh, down, uh, underside of the down tube uh, to give the battery a little more room. We, we don't want the motor pitched down significantly. A little bit is fine, but... Um, having it level where the frame is moving up is fine and that can sometimes give enough room uh, to put a battery a larger battery in that might not otherwise be possible and as i said the pro is significantly bigger and, and heavier uh, and but it uses the same method of attachment and you can see the controller is covered here uh, the wiring is all pretty neat and tidy. Uh, the underside of the controller there. So the chain rings on these, there's various options, uh, but with the Photon, uh, the, the chain rings are unique to this, this particular design. Uh, they use uh, detents on the inside of the, of the chain ring. And it has kind of a built-in bash guard, chain guard. Uh, but you notice that it's also inset, uh, which is similar uh, in effect to the way uh, the leaky parts are built for the for the Bafang, for instance. You know, um, leaky really made a name for itself by building parts uh, that corrected for the dislocation of the the chain line. That is. You know, on the Bafang motors, on the Bafang motors, the the drive mechanism is both taller and thicker, and so the chain the the chain ring is displaced further outboard. That can cause shifting problems. It can cause the chain to come off the the chain ring sometimes, um, and so Leaky relocated the chain line by wrapping around that 
but it also is restricted by the uh, the sizing because of that it has to be big enough that it wraps around the outside of that drive mechanism uh, with the photon uh, they've they've created their first of all the drive mechanism is smaller but they've also built uh, this this design in mind for this mechanism which allows for much smaller chain rings so the 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 default is a 38 tooth you can get it in a 34 tooth so for for a small drive if you want something torquey uh, and then this is there's a 50 tooth option for the uh, photon the Stealth and the Pro, as I mentioned, use the same mechanism, so they have really the same options in terms of, of chain rings. And you you have options both for the 219H chain, chain ring as well as the drive chain ring to the bicycle. Um, the standard is a 63 219H uh, connecting to uh, a 38 tooth narrow wide uh, bicycle chain ring. Uh, and the options are a, a 53 tooth uh, 219 chain ring attaching to a 32 tooth and that kit has a smaller bash guard. The larger kit is a 72 uh, with a 40 tooth uh, bicycle chain ring. And What's interesting about these also is that they use a standard BCD 104 format. So the drive chain, the, the, the chain ring to the bicycle can be adapted to any common uh, bicycle chain ring that fits that size. So that's a common format. And so there's quite a lot of options beyond what CNC provides, CYC provides. Uh, so, Going down the option list, well, the, this isn't an option, it's a requirement, but the speed sensor, um, the new speed sensors on the CYC motors all use a Bluetooth device inside the speed sensor. It moves the Bluetooth device away from the controller to avoid noise, uh, improve reception. Uh, I have the headlights here, uh, and those are switched from the handlebar. They're connected in line with the battery, same uh, XT90 uh, pass-through connectors on that. Um, but the wiring harnesses now uh, come standard with a two-wire connector. That is that there's no brake sensors if you don't order brake sensors on these. So one of these is for the display, one of them is for the throttle. And then if you get the brake sensors, it's got the four wire. If you order the brake sensors later, you need to think about getting a, uh, upgrading the harness as well. Um, the, the smallest display is the SW201. Uh, and this is a black and white display. The controls are integrated into the, uh, into the display itself. And that mounts uh, off the side of the handlebar uh, so that it's just easily reachable by the thumb. The DS-103, um, this is uh, a color display mounts in the center and the control can be mounted right or left. The 70, 750C display is available with the Pro. The Pro is the only one of these that's, that's uh, uh, rated for 72 volts. You can run this on any of the motors, but the 70, 750 is really intended to be the option uh, to use if you want to run a 72 volt battery pack. The throttle options. Uh, CYC uses a, a very uh, you know, robust thumb throttle. It, it um, it's much heavier duty than most of the, the Bafang styles that are on the market. But options are a twist throttle, which this is a half twist, partial twist, uh, and a full twist throttle. And each of those come with, uh, each of those come with a grip uh, for the other side to match. 
so we've walked through some of these choices, but what, which one of these motors is right for you? So uh, the, the differences, you know, are obviously the power, uh, the photon uh, at a maximum of uh, 1200 watt, uh, 110 Newton meters of torque, which is, which is strong, but uh, 150 Newton meters of torque on the stealth is significantly higher. So even though the, the, the wattage that the motor is rated for is not very different, um, the amount of torque that the, uh, the stealth is going to produce is significantly greater. Uh, and then obviously the pro, uh, you know, both increased torque and, uh, increased power. Um, uh, you know, the, if you're wanting a, a bike that is, if you want to build something that is going to generate more speed, then the pro is definitely the, the best choice in that regard, the pro and the stealth. Um, are going to be more flexible in terms of mounting uh, to most bikes because of the area um, that you have to work with around uh, the you know the mechanism that holds the motor. Um, but you know the photon uh, does allow for the wider bottom brackets, um, which is currently not available uh, for the stealth. I expect that to change. As I mentioned so. Uh, I, I think one of the other considerations a lot of people are going to have is sound. And so the Photon is a, is a much quieter drive mechanism. It's similar to the Bafang in that regard because the, the, the motor mechanism to, uh, to the freewheel is, uh, is enclosed. That enclosure is actually uh, you know, containing some of the noise that you would otherwise hear. And the motor's smaller and, and, and in itself quieter for that reason. The Stealth is somewhere in between. Um, you know, you're going to hear uh, on both the Pro and the Stealth, you're going to hear motor noise, which is a, the hum of the motor, uh, particularly as it winds up to speed. Um, that's a little more high pitch sound. Uh, but you're also going to hear mechanical noise from this, this is probably the most significant mechanical noise from this drive mechanism. Uh, but the Stealth is definitely quieter than the Pro. Um, you know, the, the Pro, uh, the, you know, I think it really just depends on what how sensitive you are to the sound. I've had customers that thought they would be sensitive to it and then have ridden the bike and found it to be, um, you know, not as, as significant as they were, were maybe worried about. Uh, I've had other customers tell me that they really wish it was quieter. And so, you know, it comes down to preference and, you know, what type of riding you're going to do um, and, and really what you want to get out of your riding experience. So I hope I've answered um, some of the questions that might come up. Uh, but, you know, every project is different. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. The contact information is on the web page. Uh, I'll put a link to it down in the, the description. Uh, and, you know, uh, our e-cycle uh, is here not just to support the DYI community, but we also build bikes for customers by request. So if you are interested in, in uh, looking into that, we support the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Northern California, and we've done some out-of-state bikes too. So um, again, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we'll try and answer any questions you might have and um, hope this was helpful. Uh, if so, please give us a like uh, and uh, you're welcome to subscribe to this channel or uh, subscribe to uh, our website and we'll keep you informed of updates. Thanks again and hope to see you on the trail.